Welcome to our talks on machine translation again. This talk complements the previous one by describing a different approach to grammar, dependency trees. We have seen constituency trees last time, so we know they record some kind of bracketing or divide and conquer analysis of the sentence. Dependency trees, on the other hand, record relationships between individual words. So the inner nodes in a constituency tree are labeled with non-terminals, abstract units that correspond to parts of the sentence, such as this subject part and this verb part. It's only the leaves in the tree that correspond to individual words. In dependency trees, all nodes, the leaves as well as the inner nodes in the tree, correspond to the words in the sentence, and there are no non-terminal labels. One thing that people often take for granted when looking at the drawing of a tree is the relative or absolute position of its nodes. Tree as a structure in the graph theory keeps no record of where its nodes are located. So these all are actually many drawings of just a single tree. Let's have a look at the syntactic analysis of this example sentence. We cannot ignore gaps. Linguistic trees have one node special, the root. In locally ordered trees, such as typical constituency trees, we know the relative ordering of the siblings, and we may or may not know the position of the father among its sons. The tree is actually traversed top to bottom and left to right within each level. So the sentence represented by this tree still reads, we cannot ignore gaps. It's no question. In globally ordered trees, such as this surface syntactic dependency tree, every node has its absolute position. It can thus happen that a node is positioned in an unrelated subtree, such as this we in this subtree of ignore gaps. Or put differently, there can be a subtree with gaps in its coverage. This structure, a subtree with a gap, is called non-projective construction. And in English, we can see such constructions for sentences such as this one that are topicalized. The word gaps has been fronted to emphasize it. Gaps we cannot ignore. It turns out that the expressive power of these two types of structures is different. And one way to realize this is to consider the constituency-based parsing that we have discussed last time. In constituency trees, we need to keep track of the span of each non-terminal with just two indices. The first word it covers, the second word in sentence, and the last word it covers, the fourth word in the sentence. In dependency trees with non-projectivities, to adequately record the gap subtree, we need to know where the span begins, where the gap begins, where the gap ends, and where the span itself ends. So it's four indices instead of just two. For this style of parsing, it holds that the more gaps there can be in the sentence, the harder the complexity of the parsing. The point is that some, if not many, natural languages cannot be adequately described by constituency trees. Take this example sentence in Czech. Proti odmítnutí se zítra Petr v práci rozhodl protestovat. Peter decided to object against the dismissal at work tomorrow. The sentence in Czech sounds perfectly natural to a native speaker, but in the syntactic analysis there are three gaps in the subtree of to object. Against dismissal, tomorrow, at work, to object. These are parts of the subtree, and there are gaps caused by the reflexive particle se, by the subject Peter, and by the main verb of the sentence to decide. It turns out that about a quarter of Czech sentences contain such a non-projectivity, and about 8% of English sentences are this complex. So an empty system that relies on a constituency grammar cannot adequately describe one quarter of Czech and 8% of English. That was one reason for representing sentences as dependency trees, to adequately capture non-projective constructions. Another reason is the context of neighbors in a dependency analysis. Take this example sentence, the grass around your house should be cut soon. If we want to translate this sentence, for example, into Czech, we will have to choose a translation for this verb cut. And there is not a single verb for cutting in Czech. The translation actually depends on what is being cut, whether it is grass, bread or taxes. The problem with phrase-based empty is that the word grass and the word cut are very far from each other. So they will not be captured in one single phrase. And therefore, the phrase-based empty is very likely to mistranslate the cutting. In dependency analysis of the sentence, the words grass and cut are actually neighbors. So if an empty system traverses the edges in the graph, 
It will handle the two words close to each other and it is likely to pick the right translation. Dependency analysis of the sentence reflects better the relationships between words than n-grams do. Interestingly, in explaining the success of phrase-based MT, it's about 50% of edges that connect adjacent words. So bigrams are an excellent approximation of dependencies. And similarly, the data tell us that about 80% of edges fit in a 4-gram. And current machines are definitely strong enough to handle 4-grams. If we look at the number of non-projectivities, we see that even in a language as complex as Czech is, 99% of sentences contain at most one gap. So only a small extension of the context-free approach is needed, mildly context-sensitive grammars. Dependency trees have been employed in many machine translation experiments, but in contrast to constituency trees, there is not a single and standard approach to using them. They are relatively easy to use on the source side, where we can ignore the word order, but on the target side, we need to pick position for each node in the dependency tree. We'll get back again to dependency trees when covering the deep syntax of the sentence. But we need to talk about word formation and inflection first. See you next time.